it's all too easy to look at various social issues and problems that we see as Christians in society and attack those in and of themselves and fail to see the big picture of what these particular symptoms of a sinful society really represent. Chalcedon is a worldview organization. We try to get to Christians to see the big picture, not only just to analyze, but also to see our responsibility in terms of the righteousness of the kingdom of God. A very current social issue is pornography. My father wrote a book in 1974. It was originally called The Politics of Pornography, and he used the term politics in terms of the social manifestations of pornography and how it affected a culture. He was using it in terms of the bigger concept of politics. And it wasn't really about how uh, Washington or state houses uh, deal with the issue of pornography. We published the book in 2005. We renamed this Noble Savages. And the subtitle was Exposing the Worldview of Pornographers and Their War Against Christian Civilization. Now, the point my father made in Noble Savages is that pornography is a symptom of a larger problem. It's much bigger than images on paper or digital images on a computer. It represents what Isaiah talked about in Isaiah 5.20. Isaiah said, Woe to them that call evil good and good evil. This is what we're really looking at. It's a symptom of sin, but it's also it's a symptom of how sinful man redirects what is good and what is evil and redefines. And the same problem that we see manifested in pornography is manifested in our educational system, our legal system, throughout our culture. That is the redefinition of good and evil. One man who was very instrumental in modern times in redefining things was Hugh Hefner. Hugh Hefner, the founder of the Playboy Empire, created what he called the Playboy philosophy. And that was what is natural is good, and anything which prevents man from doing what is natural is in fact harmful to man's psychology. So because he said sex was good, the body was natural, therefore pornography was in fact a social good. He completely flip-flopped evil and good. Christianity was the evil, and pornography was the greater good. And this goes back before Hefner. Hefner was only reflecting the trend of modern thought, really, since, particularly since Darwin. It's a natural consequence of what Darwin talked about. Since Darwin, man's thinking has completely shifted because man came up from the primordial slime. What is natural is now normative. In fact, Christians make this problem when they talk about homosexuality or any other thing which Christians see as a perversion. They say it's not natural. Terrible line of reasoning because you can't argue with Darwinian naturalists about what is natural because if it hasn't been natural, once man does it, it becomes natural because reality of what men do becomes the new definition of what is natural. So you can never win an argument with a naturalist about something being unnatural. Man's problem is that he followed Satan's advice and he tried to be his own god. That was Satan's temptation in Genesis 3.5. And pornography is one way of looking at the world in terms of completely inverting the good and evil, as Isaiah said, turning the world morally upside down. Pornography is more than what you see. It propagates a specific view of man. It's a view of morality and a view of life that is completely contrary to Scripture. It's more fundamental than just images. It's really a philosophy of life. Pornography actually serves modern humanism quite well because freedom was once conceived of within the context of dominion man and man building a future for himself and his family without interference from others. The humanistic philosophy is that man does not know what's best for him and therefore man's freedom must be limited and the state is the real agency that which will take man into his new future. It's a very collectivist perspective. Now men define their freedom in terms of how much sexual license they have. Whenever you get into a discussion, for instance, about biblical law or biblical morality in general and how it might affect the public sphere, inevitably people will object to the idea, well, they would ban this or that aspect of sexual license. They would try to ban pornography. What would you do about homosexuals? What would you do about adulterers? They're concerned about any restrictions on men's sexual activities. What this is symptomatic of is that sexual license has been the essence of man's new freedom. And this serves the purpose of the state. 
we are now amongst the most regulated, the most controlled, the most taxed people in history. And yet we still talk about being the land of the free and the home of the brave. Why? Because we can be as immoral as we want, as long as we give the state its taxes, as long as we do what the state tells us to, as long as we submit to the invasion of our privacy by the long arm of government. And so pornography and vices in general do serve the purpose of the modern state. They fool man into thinking he's really free, when in reality, he's not only a slave to sin, he's a slave to the state. Scripture obviously gives us clear indication why pornography is wrong. From a Christian perspective, we know it's a violation of the commandment against adultery. It also calls to mind Christ's condemnation of the lust in one's heart. And so we know it's wrong. There's a tendency amongst conservatives, particularly Christian conservatives, to think if something is wrong, we need to address it at the state level. In reality, when you have a very immoral society, laws do very little good, except create disrespect for the laws. An example of that was prohibition. We created a law against something we saw as a moral evil, and the law was so widely disregarded, it led to widespread disobedience. And one of the reasons why prohibition was ended is because people had contempt for the law itself, and they had no compunction against violating that law. When we look at the prophets and what the prophets condemned in Israel and Judah, they condemned the immorality. And yet, one of the things they did not do is they said, well, the government should have done that, the government should have done this. They condemned their immorality, but they said the nation as a whole was responsible, whether it was for theft. I mean, even Baal worship was going on in Judah. Right there in Jerusalem, there were temples to Baal. And did God say, you should have passed a law against this, the government should have cracked down on that? He condemns the people for being idolatrous. And this is true regarding whether it's adultery, whether it's pornography. When the people are immoral, that's the problem, and that's the problem we have to address. And the state can't really address that. And the state is going to fail if it tries to address this by imposing this on the people. This is the fallacy of addressing these things from the level of Washington or the State House. It's really a religious problem. Therefore, it's a problem in the churches, it's a problem in families, and it has to be addressed at the personal, it has to be addressed at the family level, it has to be addressed at the church level. We have to change people before we can change our laws. If you create a law that goes completely contrary to the morality of the people, it's only going to destroy the concept of respect for the law, and it's not going to accomplish anything. It can make you feel good to do it, and I'm not saying such laws would be wrong. I'm saying they don't address the heart issue, and that is that we're a sinful people. We're, as Christ referred to the first century Jews, you're an adulterous generation. Well, we're a pornographic generation. We're an immoral people, and we have to address this. We have to address the root cause. We have to change people in order to change society. And to change society, then, we'll see its laws change. It has to be a bottom-up change. And too often, we look for a presidential candidate to solve problems and fix marriage by a law or an amendment to the Constitution, and that's not going to solve the problem. We have to have a more Christian people first. The question naturally arises, what do we do? If we believe in Christian Reconstruction, if we believe in applying the faith to all of life, what do we do about an issue such as pornography? How do we address the problem? We can address the problem very forcefully because we have to say what God says about any given issue. The prophets, for instance, declared the nation was sinning. The prophets didn't say, let's pass a law to force these bad people to act as though they're good people. He condemned the people, and we have to condemn the people. We can't think that a law is going to change things or make God any more pleased with an evil people. If we look at the the big picture, the big worldview, a lot of what we need to do in this area, as well as other areas, is Christian education. We need to understand where pornography fits into an unchristian worldview and why pornography is a problem. Men want to call evil good and good evil. It stems from their concept of man and his primordial evolutionary past, and whatever is natural, they call good. We first of all need to educate our young people. We need to teach them a worldview that begins with man as a rebel against God, and we need to teach them a perspective of the future as seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If they have that proper worldview, they can 
approach these individual issues in terms of the faith, not in terms of an individual issue. If you approach it just as an object, then it becomes my right to this object versus your opinion that it's wrong. Then the whole argument stems around, we'll leave some people to pursue pornography, and you don't have to. But if it comes from a worldview, then it's a larger issue because it affects everyone. Christian education is necessary in applying the faith to every area of life. And pornography is just a tiny, tiny sliver of what we're talking about and the problems in our society. It's only a symptom. It's not the core problem. Man's problem is that he's a sinner against God and that he needs to be redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And he needs to reshape his thinking in terms of Scripture. We need to think in terms of teaching people to think in terms of the kingdom of God and not get bogged down as into the issue of you know, my First Amendment rights versus your First Amendment rights. And so we do need to be prophetic and say, this is why these issues are wrong. We always stay focused on the big problems. If you want to read the best book on the issue of pornography, one that puts it in the context of man in rebellion against God, you need to pick up this book my father wrote. It's called Noble Savages, Exposing the Worldview of Pornographers and the War Against Christian Civilization. It's available from calcedon.edu bookstore. Our victory begins with our understanding of the Christian faith, and Noble Savages is a beginning of how you can understand not only the issue of pornography, but the larger issue of modern man's rebellion against God.